Girl Gladys, aka is that your hair, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so happy to have you here. And if you've been rocking with me for a minute, what's up? What's good? And welcome back. So, as you can probably tell by the title of this video, today is all about making your wigs look as natural as possible. I have touched on this subject before, and if you are interested in seeing more videos about you know, making your wig look natural, definitely check out my wig 101 playlist. I've been building up that playlist to include different videos that would touch on, you know, how to make your parting space look natural, how to thin out a wig, things like that. So check that out after this video if you want to see more tips and tricks. But in this video, I want to do a tutorial from start to finish that will really talk you through making your wig look natural and why I do certain things to make my wigs look realistic and why I do them and so forth. I know a lot of the times in my other videos, I speed through my talk, my tutorials, but I'm really going to try to talk you through it in this one. It's gonna be quite a bit of information, but hopefully you guys can stick it out and hear me out. If you're interested in how to make your wig look as natural as possible, keep on watching. So today I have here Nisha204, brand new from Outre from their Soft and Natural Hair series. I did recently do a collab with the Hearts and Cake 90 where we showcased 204 and 205 and talked in great detail of what we think about the wig. Check out our videos in the description box down below. Overall, I do like 204 and 205, but they do require some work. And that's why I chose this wig for the tutorial today because I know some people might naturally feel a little bit overwhelmed by Nisha and the whole series. So I just want to show you how I make her work for me. So I have her here in the number two color. Here is Nisha fresh out of the packaging, okay? I did cut the lace beforehand and I love that she comes with a nice brown lace. You see that? Oh, I like that. So she does come with your typical cap construction. You have your two combs here in the front. You have a comb here in the back and you do have adjustable straps. The parting space, I would say, goes back like a good four inches or so. It's looking pretty natural, no need to pluck or tweeze. Let me just cut this lace a little bit more. So here's the first tip when it comes to making your wigs look as natural as possible. You must have a flat foundation. Literally, whatever you do to this wig is not gonna matter if your hair is not flat underneath your wig. So this is how I um, have my braids under my wig. It is a little bit old, but I usually go to someone to braid it for me. I have two, four, six, eight, ten. So I get my hair braided in this way because I know I often wear a middle part. So I rather just have like a middle part carved out from the beginning on my foundation. The reason why I like my foundation braided this way is because I've noticed as my hair grows out underneath the wigs, when I have it braided going back, like just straight backs, I feel like the puffiness shows through easier to the wig. Whereas when I braid it in this pattern, I feel like it doesn't show through as easily and, and it can last longer because I sometimes go a while without rebraiding my hair. So that's why I prefer this braiding pattern. So of course I have my wig cap. People wear wig caps for different reasons. I mean, for me, it's supposed to like protect my hair. And also if you do have a lot of hair underneath your wigs, like your natural hair, it's a lot. It's, it just helps press it down. Another tip when it comes to making your wigs look natural, you gotta look at the wig y'all and assess. What do you have going on here? Look at Nisha 204 off the bat. She is very dense. My natural hair, is not this dense when it's straightened. When it straightens, it kind of looks more like a 140 maybe density. So I know for me, I'm gonna have to maybe thin it out or apply some heat just to make it look more natural for my liking. Everyone has different preferences. Some people like their hair really full on wigs. And I do on occasion when it's like really kinky, curly texture. But for kinky straight, I prefer it a little less dense. So it's just good to assess your wigs and know what you're working with before you put it on. So now I have the wig on. I already know that this wig is snug because I reviewed it before, but it's a little snug and that's fine. I don't want it to the middle. I want it to the side. So I'm gonna just 
push it to the side here. Now, a lot of people usually have trouble at this point. You look at the wig and you see clearly you need to blend that parting space. And a lot of people just don't know how or maybe they don't care to. I definitely care because uh, I want this to look as natural as possible. So, one, I need to make sure my part is clearly defined, okay? I'm here and just, you know, just trying to, even though, you know, I don't have straight backs, I just kind of go like this and try to define the pathway for my part. Then I am going to use some got to be glue gel and add it on. This step is really important, you guys, because some people will just try to move on without allowing the glue to get tacky and you need to let it get tacky before you start applying powder and all that. So I just parted this like this because I like when the parts are a little bit more curved. To me, that looks a little bit more natural and I will use heat to kind of make that blend later. But you see, I'm curving the part and the glue is getting tacky. I do use my Evan, um, this is for your edges, and I will use that along here to kind of like make some of those go back a little bit. I'll use like a little bit, try to slick that back. Okay, so the parting space is looking better, but of course we are not done. Now you see this here, you see how this lace is showing? You should definitely fill that in, that's the next tip. You can use and eyeliner pencil, you can use liquid eyeliner. I'm using liquid because that's what I have on me right now. And you just want to fill that in. The next thing I'm going to do is use my pressed powder and I use the Maybelline Fit Me powder in the color 360. And I'll have an Amazon link to this powder in the description box down below. Make sure that you're using an angled brush. You see how it is here and you see how it is here. I think that's the best brush to use when you are trying to um, apply powder in your parting space because it's a thin brush. You see? Already this powder is making this look so much more natural. As far as how much powder you use, it's a matter of preference. You don't want to look like you're parting the Red Sea in your head. Don't be too heavy handed. And it's up to you how far back you wanna go. This is already looking a lot better. When it comes to applying the powder, you must be very precise. And you have to pay attention. I'm in natural lighting right now because I want you to see how this will look when you walk outside. From here, yeah, it looks pretty good, but you wanna tilt your head up so that you can clearly see where you need to add more powder, like right here. This is not natural looking. I'm adding some more. Another thing I like to do, sometimes I like to dab just a tiny bit of got to be glue from the black bottle because, I don't know, I feel like that helps seal it a little bit. So I'll add like a tiny bit and let it dry. I prefer using the black bottle when laying down lace because it doesn't usually leave a white cast like the yellow bottle will sometimes do. All right, so the parting space is looking pretty good. I'm tilting my head up, trying to see if there is anything and you know if i notice anything i can always apply a powder later now this is looking very cute right but one thing i noticed in my review of this unit the curls in the back are totally different from the curls in the front i prefer how the curls in the front look i love the fair faucet look i think it's gorgeous so i'm just going to use heat to just make all these curls kind of come together in the same direction. But before I do that, I do wanna flatten down the top. I notice a lot of people will forget to apply heat to the top of their wigs. It looks really humpy, almost like a cone head. I wouldn't go out the house with it looking like this. Like this is not okay. You need to apply heat. All right, y'all, so the parting space is looking pretty good. It's looking pretty natural, right? I may go in and fix a few things, but right now I'm gonna focus on the hair. So a lot of people 
they look at this and they're like, okay, this hair is looking pretty good. However, for me, knowing that these curls are in like a totally different curl on the back, that would bother me. So that's why I'm going to use my Revlon One Step Blow Dryer. Now I've been raving about this brush. It's like my new favorite hair tool. This is what it looks like. The heat comes out of the top part of the brush and you're able to brush through your hair, whether it be a wig or natural hair, to blow it out. I love using this on my natural hair. I'm not the type of person who likes using heat on my hair, but I do like using this on my natural hair, especially after it's been, been, been detangled. It works really well. So I'm going to use this right now to fix these curls. So already I'm seeing a difference in the curl. I'm gonna turn around and show you. Hopefully, if you can tell. Let me finish the rest and I'll come back. So I'm all done blowing out some of the curls. Look at this. Look at how pretty this looks, wow. This looks a lot better to me. So again, the reason why I use the blow dryer brush is because I wanted to tame some of the curls. As a result, the, the wig might look a little bit longer and that's fine. I'm 5'3 for reference. Yeah, I like the way it looks. I did blow dry it on low heat and it didn't take me but like maybe a minute. I think that's just like a really quick and easy way to style wigs like this that are very high density. If you're interested in this blow dryer brush, the Amazon link will definitely be in the description box. Let me know if you think this brush is for you, if you've tried it yourself, or if you are thinking about purchasing it, let me know. So once I style the wig, I'm pretty much done. The part of the space is looking pretty good. The only thing I would do at this point is just make sure this part is kind of matching up. So I would most likely take like a brown liner and kind of like fill in over here. You know what I mean? I would just kind of fill that in if, if I'm seeing any spaces. I'm a perfectionist, so I can I can do this for a while. <laughs> but I would use the brown liner for that. And yeah, I'm pretty much done. Look at the parting space. I mean, it looks pretty good to me. <laughs> Those are some of the steps I take when I really want my wig to look very natural. My natural hair is still not even as full as this, but I still think it's more believable than the way it came straight out of the pack. And also some people have natural hair that's very dense just like this. So I'm sure this helps somebody. Yes, this is looking good. Oh, one thing I almost forgot. You have to frame these wigs to your face. Y'all already know how I feel about scissors. I have no qualms. I just want to, you know, snip a little bit here in the front to frame to my face better. And over here, I might snip a little bit. Over here, probably snip a little bit. On this side, snipping us a little bit. You know, you just snip where you see fit. It's all a matter of preference. I do this a lot, so to me, I'm, I'm not intimidated by it. And I just highly encourage all of you out there to do the same. Now, if you want to take this a step further and um, make it look even more a little bit natural, you could take a small razor comb, pull this and shed at the hair here. That will definitely add to how realistic this unit will look. I'm not gonna do that right now because I think it looks good like this and I don't have my razor comb on me. <laughs> but if you do end up with a unit that has a very dense hairline like this unit does, and if you don't like the way it looks around the hairline here, use a razor comb right here and just shave it off very carefully and you'll notice a difference. Please let me know how you feel about this tutorial in the comments down below. Let me know which tips helped you. Are you a beginner when it comes to wearing wigs? Maybe you are I'm more of an expert let me know if you have any additional tips definitely drop them in the comments because this is a community we are tight knit and we are here to help each other i swear when we come out of this quarantine not now one wig should be slipping in 2020 period i don't want to see no wig slippage you saw what i did you saw the got to be glue you saw how i parted the space i mean this is looking pretty damn good if i do say so myself and you can do the same thing all my other wig bays out there all my other wig experts drop your tips down below let's help each other and if you are new to my channel and you like what you see definitely hit that subscribe button because you don't want to miss the other content i have coming up and of course tap that notification bell we are on the road to 10k you guys Woo! I'm so excited about that, as I'm sure some of you are too. Thank you to everyone who just joined the family. And of course, if you've been rocking with me, my love goes out to you. If you wanna see some of my latest videos, you can check them out over here to the right of me. Make sure you check out my Wig 101 playlist if you need additional tips. Thank you all so, so much.
for joining me for today's tutorial. I know it was a little bit long, but I appreciate you sticking through and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Boy, you got that yummy.